What is going on everybody? It's your boy Ehi Azokin, aka Esquire, and we are back with another video. Thank you guys so much for watching my last video, I really appreciate it, but now, we're on to this video, the new video. We're on to bigger and better things now. So the questions I wanna answer in this video are actually pretty good, so I wanna get straight to it. But before we get started, do me three things. Do me three favors, please. Number one, hit that subscribe button and tap the bell notification. That way you never miss a video I upload in the coming future. Two, watch this video all the way to the end. And number three, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give that like button a tap and share this video with some friends and family you think might actually enjoy these videos as well. With all that out the way, come on, let's get started now. So the first question we got today is, what do I think about our current educational system? And let me tell ya, <sighs> I'm not too fond of it. Now before I dive into this, I wanna give a bit of context. This current educational system we have right now is, is pretty good. It is, I'm not gonna lie, it is pretty good. It does teach us students a lot of things that will be helpful in life. However, my four years in high school, my four and a half years in university, I've come to realize some things about our educational system that I don't find very helpful for people inside of it right now. So one complaint I have about this current education system is the overabundance and overtreatment of the STEM programs. So if you don't know what I mean about the STEM programs, I'm talking about the programs that fall under science, technology, engineering, and math. For anyone watching one of those programs, don't get it twisted. I appreciate you guys so much because within the past 25 to 30 years, technology has been skyrocketing. Because of technology, we have a lot of investments in medicine, infrastructure, analytics, modern chemistry, and science as a whole. Without you guys in the STEM programs, we wouldn't be able to get as far as we did, so I really appreciate you guys. So my one complaint about the STEM program is not a slight on you guys, it's just the way it's being handled. And let me explain. So in order to properly explain my point of view, I gotta give you guys a bit of background on the type of student I am. So throughout my four years of high school, I kind of found out that I wasn't really geared towards more of the sciences in terms of education. So going into grade 11, I found more of a passion in studying business in my post-secondary. So I originally wanted to be a doctor when I, was, when I was a kid. But after I found out that I just really struggled in some of the sciences like biology, physics, and chemistry, I thought maybe that wasn't for me. So I thought business was the better option for me because I felt more passionate about it. I felt that more of my creative side could come out while studying business. I can put my own twist into things and make things unique in my sense. So the summer going into grade 11, I met with my guidance counselor. Let me tell you guys something. Guidance counselors can either make or break your school career. Let me tell you what happened. This guidance counselor, I'm not gonna name names for the sake of privacy, but this guidance counselor convinced my mom that I have to take a science course in order to qualify for any business degrees I wanted to apply to in the next year in grade 12. Now to me, in my, I thought I was ridiculous. By the time I was a 15 going on to 16 year old kid and I didn't know any better, so I just took her word for it. So in my grade 11, my first term, I studied biology and I worked my butt off and I got a 70 on the dot. And I worked so hard and I realized this wasn't for me. And when I found out every single program I applied to, not one of them asked for a science credit. That doesn't make any sense. So that's just one example of how a guidance counselor almost messed up my opportunity to apply to different schools. So fast forward to grade 12, I applied to different schools and lo and behold, I got accepted to University of Waterloo, which is the school I'm currently at right now. So the program I got accepted for at UW was on arts and business. Now you see, I was very confused, like, what's honor arts and business? I've never heard of that before. At UW here, there's no pure business faculty, so business is attached to different faculties. You have arts and business, you have environment and business, or you have science and business, etc. So because I wasn't into sciences, I wasn't into environment, I applied for honor arts and business. And I applied for the whole co-op aspect, and co-op is basically, for people watching in the States, it's like internships, like every summer or so, you'd be going out work at different places, work at a real company, get a real experience. I got accepted in my first year. This is where it really hit me. This is where I really figured out that the educational system was really geared towards people in the STEM program. I had a lot of people in my first year floor where a lot of them were engineers who had some mechatronic engineers, chemical engineers, all sorts of people. And a lot of people I met on campus as well, a lot of people are engineers because UW is really big in the engineering faculty. I started to see all the funding going towards engineering and also programs like computer science and math and even the sciences like bio, chem, physics, things like that. 
And I was thinking, looking back on my own faculties and the arts faculties, and I'm like, we don't get that type of funding for our own buildings and our own program. That felt really, really weird to me. I started asking myself, why is there such a discrepancy? Why is there such a gap between funding? It really hit me. This starts from high school. So I want you guys to think back to your high school days. What did you need to graduate? You needed at least, what, four English credits, which is pretty standard, three math credits, two science credits, but only one credit in the arts? That didn't make too much sense to me. Now you see, in my opinion, all the arts courses that are offered in high school are seen as electives and are not mandatory towards a student's curriculum. On the other hand, you see a lot of courses under STEM being pushed towards students, being this is what you need in order to do well and further careers. Someone like me, I'm not too great at math. I'm not too great at like advanced functions or calculus or all that. I can do financial math because it makes sense to me, but in terms of calculus, I don't want to even be near that. Now, but this educational system we're in, I feel that it forces students to try their best in something they're not good at. Meanwhile, in courses related to the arts, I mean, they could be great in photography, they could be great in drama, they could be great at music, but because those are treated as electives and not optimal careers going forward with their lives, they're just, they're always pushed to the side. If you don't believe me, you can go check out some articles yourself. A lot of schools with their arts courses, their funding is getting cut, especially in Ontario here because they're seen as not necessary and they're seen as, and they're seen as not of value to students. I like to disagree. I think those, those, the course, those arts courses are very valuable to students. However, you'll never know that if you're constantly cutting them away from the curriculum and treating them as electives, treating them as something that's not required in life. You can learn a lot of valuable skills with courses in the arts, not just the practical skills, but also soft skills, like how to collaborate with others, how to make connections, things like that. It's all different things you may not necessarily learn in, STEM, in the STEM courses, but we'll never know what can truly be of value. In my opinion, I believe we should push more arts courses and make it a part of the curriculum more for in order to students to truly discover what they're good at and what they appreciate and what they actually like to do. That way going further in their careers, once they graduate, a lot of people will be more happy with what they're doing. And a lot of businesses can attest to it. I've seen this from my own personal experiences. Workers who are happy are more productive and more productivity is good for business and it's good for the economy as whole. You don't want someone who may be good at something, whether it be in engineering or computer science or an IT or technology, but then be miserable, but then be miserable at their job. You don't want people just going there to collect a paycheck. You want them to be engaged and happy and actually be excited to work. So I think all of that boils down to the current educational system we have because a lot of art courses are getting pushed to go and explore. I'm sorry to make this sound like it's a big rant. Trust me, like I said before, I truly appreciate the STEM program because without them, all the advances we have in our current society would not be possible at all. I'm just in the mindset that while also pushing and encouraging STEM programs, you should also push and encourage arts programs as well. That way people have options. So they shouldn't feel that they're obligated to study something they're not passionate about and work in places they don't want to be at. One of the things I think can help is to advocate for more arts courses in the curriculum. For example, if you want to graduate high school, I'd advocate incorporating two arts courses as well as two science courses. That way it's more balanced and students are able to explore their options more and see what they prefer, whether it be more science, based courses or more arts based courses when they're applying to universities. So another thing I believe could be helpful in terms of turning around our educational system would be advocating for more arts based courses to be implemented in the STEM programs in university. I'm thinking maybe throwing in some communication courses, maybe throwing in some photography courses, maybe throwing in some drama courses, maybe even sound design or maybe even video editing. Courses like that just to give students in the STEM programs a bit more variety so they can explore their options when they're furthering their careers after they graduate school. At the end of the day, I just want everybody to be happy with what they're studying while they're in university and college, and also to be happy in the job they're working on while they're currently in their careers. <laughs> I really don't wanna answer it because I feel like it might spark a debate, but I'm gonna answer it anyways. So the question we got is, are we really wet when we are underwater? or are we considered wet as soon as we come out of water? <laughs> this question has taken me back a couple of years ago when there was a whole debate, is water wet? And I was just, it, it boggles my mind. I, I don't know what to say, like, what? I'm gonna get nice and close and I'm gonna answer this very simply. I don't want any debates about this. I don't wanna hear anything after this. Water is wet, period. If you are a land, creature, which you are, 
you're human. As soon as water touches you, you are therefore wet. It doesn't matter whether it just splashes on you and it doesn't matter whether you're underwater. If you are not supposed to be underwater, you are wet. Done. It's 2019 and we're still dealing with this debate. I digress. So that's all the questions I got in today's video. I wanna thank you guys so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you really like what I'm doing here, make sure you give that a like button a tap. Once again, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification, that way you never miss a video I upload. And if you have a question you want me to answer, make sure you hit me up in the comment section down below or follow my social media handles up there, DM me a question, and I'll make sure to get to it in the next video. That's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys are having a blessed day. Take care of yourselves and easy.